Hey guys, about to play match one of our final Magic Origins draft here on the Need to Own Magic channel. We drafted a pretty strong green-white deck, but it does lack removal, and that's definitely a problem. Uh, but we'll see how things go. Our creatures are strong, and sometimes that, especially in this format, can help you get there. So since there's not a lot of the removal is pretty expensive, so you can do a lot of damage early, then you're in pretty good shape. Plus, we have Sentinel of the Eternal Watch to help us stabilize late, so. Both of those things seem pretty good. Our opponent won the die roll. He's deciding whether or not they'd like to play first. Let's see if I have these. There we go. As small as possible. Uh, I guess uh, I'll re resume recording when our opponent uh, lets us see what our hand will be. All right, we have our opening hand now, and I think it's one we keep. It would be great if we could draw planes before we have turn two. Or, um, but uh, if we don't, then we just play our Dwinnins Elite. Um, we'd, of course, like to play Consul's Lieutenant first. But uh, that doesn't always happen. All right, so we're going to lead with the planes in case we draw planes. We do have our Archangel in our hand as well. There's his Evolving Wilds. I wouldn't mind one of those. We're at ours right now. All right, black, green. So we may be up against Elves. Okay. So Dwinnin's Elite it is. If we draw any kind of land, we can play um, either our Chief or our Knight. We probably play the Knight. Uh, although if I draw a Plains, I probably still try to play Consul's Lieutenant and punch it through with our combat tricks and stuff. And if that's his play, then we're really not super concerned. We didn't get any of those, unfortunately. Our opponent may have all of them. We passed a few. I think we took Dwinnin's Elite over one. All right, so we did draw the planes. Um, so we're gonna play. We're gonna play Consul's Lieutenant because of the board state. Like our opponent's stuck on two lands. Um, he didn't draw one with his Visionary. And there aren't very many three drops that can block and survive blocking a consul's lieutenant, so I think we just play out the lieutenant. So that if it gets renowned, then it'll be just a big problem. You can things can just snowball from there. Okay. That does complicate things a bit, um, but we can two for one our opponent pretty easily. Um would have been nice to drop planes there, then we could have just smashed anyway. Um, so we're going to swing with both these guys and then use... Have to use Might of the Masses to kill this uh, and get a two for one. Right, and now we'll play out Knight of the Pilgrim's Road and end our turn. Yeah, I feel like taps out, plays a creature, and we draw planes. It's going to be pretty bad for our opponent. All these guys will get renowned. Come on, planes. That's pretty good for us, even if we don't draw planes, and we didn't, because uh, he can only trade with the Knight of the Relic of the Reliquary. Yeah, I wish that's what that card was. The Knight of uh, what is his name? Pilgrim's Road. Yeah, that. He'll probably block there. I mean, he can block here too, but it's better to block there. And this guy, he probably won't block. If he does, it's just a chump block, and I'm okay with it. Um, we can untap him with Enshrouding Mist if we need to at some point after he gets Renown. Question is whether or not our opponent has Eye Blight's ending. Uh, but it doesn't really change what we would do here because our Chief of the Foundry can survive it anyway. So we'll play our Chief. And our elf survives it too. He would just get a one for one. 
by killing our consul's lieutenant. So if he doesn't play a blocker, or if we draw planes and he taps out, okay, well he's not going to tap out, it doesn't look like. But all our guys are going to get plus one, plus one when we swing. All right, we can get the third planes we want now. Um, so let's swing with everyone. I mean, I'm guessing he's going to chump block here, but he's definitely in a bad place. We'll play the Evolving Wilds and end our turn. Yep, well, we won that one. Basically the way we thought this deck would win, just playing dudes out quickly and cracking in with them. Um, our opponent had some weird cards, like the one in a green, plus one, plus three in reach thing. Uh, I don't think that's enough for me to see to bring in the enlightened uh, ascetic. Um, yeah, I think we just leave things. Heavy infantry is nice with all our renowned guys, but I don't think we're in like desperate need of it um, at this point. Uh, I mean, our, if our opponent had, like, multiple Guardians of Melitus or something crazy like that, that was slowing our deck down, Yoke Doxes, then I'd probably bring it in. But we didn't see anything like that. Although I guess the Mantle of Webs, that's what it's called, can sort of make a dude into, like, a super blocker, but we can get through them with our combat tricks like we did that game. Okay, this is another keep. Another one where we would like to draw uh, planes as soon as possible, but playing a turn two Herald of Pantheon is okay too. So similar to our last hand. We'll lead with the planes. All right, opponent off to a better start this time. All right. Again, no success drawing any land on turn three, but we, at least we had a two drop of some kind. And we drew most of our high curve cards, which is not good. Last time our hand was lower curve, like twos and threes. So like no matter what lands we drew, we had a three drop. And for now, if I draw a forest, I can't do anything on my next turn, which is definitely frustrating, but it's the way things are sometimes. All right, Dead Bridge Shaman. It's going to beat us up a little bit. Okay, we drew another two drop, though. So there's that. Um, should I just swing here? I think I do. If I have to discard a card, I'll discard a card. Probably the Guardian Automaton, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I'll discard the automaton and end the turn there. I did that so that later our Relic Seeker has maybe a clearer path to getting Renown. Um, I mean, if he plays like a four drop here, then it's not really going to matter. But <laughs> uh, unless it's a mediocre one, I guess. Say he drops a Freak as Disciple, though. The Wild Instincts, pretty good. Especially if we can't draw mana to play a creature this turn. And we did not. So we pass. So we're the Mana Screwed Ones this time around. But the strength of the cards in our hand can bail us out. Um... You know, we can wait a little while to draw some lands, although our opponent is massing an Elvish Assault Force. So we're quickly running out of the time that we need. Yep. So we're taking 5, going to 11. 
If we draw planes, we can kind of stabilize, but our opponent has so much mana that probably doesn't matter. There's a mantle of webs again. So, three, five, six damage. Ooh, okay. Eight damage. Yeah, I think we die. Like, that's actually really good against us because we have so little removal. Like, these enchantments are actually really good against us. Um, but I think we pretty much lose this game. What if we go land, 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 land? Do we still lose the game? Probably. Okay, that's really not the land we wanted to draw. And we'll be dead. I guess we'll play it out, see what happens. Um, I mean, he's going to hit us for nine this turn, so <laughs> I don't really think there's anything we can do, but... But hope. <laughs> Even hoping, though, isn't going to do us any good. All right. Sacrifice our Evolving Wilds. Got all those lands that are still in our deck. Okay, yeah, we scoop. Well, we had an even worse time than our opponent did with Mana Screw in Game 1. Uh, we had much worse Mana Screw in Game 2. Um, let's hope things go a little better this time. Do we want to bring in Enlightened Ascetic now that we saw multiple enchantments? I mean, he is going to be able to eat a card pretty regularly, but, like, what would I take out? You know, that's the question. Um, I don't really want to lose any of our combat tricks, since that's the only way we have of taking out our opponent's cards, basically. So, Let's see if we get another two-lander that seems like it'll be good. Okay, this is actually very good, um, and we're going to keep it. We can play our Angel with what we have in our hand. We have a Leaf Gilder, and we have a Knightly Valor, um, all of which is good. So, I am happy about that. I'll play the Plains in case I top deck our double white guy. It's a, sort of a small thing that it's important to remember to do. And remember what's in your deck, like, because if... I top decked the uh, double white console's lieutenant and played my forest first. I just wouldn't be able to play him this turn if I draw him. So it's pretty important to remember to do that when you have double colored two drops. But it was not important for us. Um, so we'll play Leaf Gilder. Yeah, we have some, some gas in this hand, that's for sure. Much different than our last hand was. There's that elf who can unfortunately block our sad little leaf gilder. Right, drawing all of our green. Um, we'll play out our chief of the foundry and end our turn there. Next turn, we're going to drop the Archangel. We could also just play Knightly Valor, depending on the board state, but I think I would rather drop the Knightly Valor. I mean, the Archangel in most situations. Especially because, well, I still have one turn before he has black instant speed removal up, so we can play Knightly Valor without being too worried uh, on any of our dudes. Putting it on the Archangel seems the best because it has evasion. So there's an Angel's Tomb. Not something to be super concerned about. Yeah, we definitely play, now that he's tapped out, we play the Archangel first and just swing. And we still play the Archangel first before the Citadel Castellan, I think. Okay, let me double read the, double check this guy. If untapped, can't block, he plays one. That's what I thought. Just wanted to check. It's a pretty cool card, cool design. And we should get in for four. And we do. And our Archangel of Tithes can just block the Angel's Tomb. So there you go. Yeah, so we'll play Knightly Valor this turn probably, even though getting the Castell out's big. The Knightly Valor um, is best to play when I know my opponent can't two-for-one me. So, I mean, he may end up tapping out next turn anyway, but 
right now I know that there's no five mana, uh, there's no four mana instant speed removal in either green or black that he can use in response to Nightly Valor. Or, uh, yeah, in response to Nightly Valor. Um, all there is is uh, five mana black instant speed removal. So that's why I want to play the Valor now. And it's going to hurt our opponent pretty badly. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he just tapped out, so I'm okay with that. Angel's Tomb is not a card I've been overly impressed with uh, in this format. I think I tried it out once when I had a deck full of like one and two drops, but wait, what? You have to pay to attack. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think we do put Knightly Valor on our Angel since it has Evasion. And this makes it so it's always untapped and always attacking. <laughs> I just thought about that synergy, but that's pretty gross. So when it's attacking, it'll make it so my opponent has to pay to block. And when it's blocking, which will, since it has Vigilance, when it's untapped, um, does it say attacking or tapped? Yeah, attacking. So it works out. Giving it Vigilance is pretty gross. I think our opponent's probably face palming right now because it's pretty awful. I mean, he may have removal. But even as he, if he does, we generate a lot of value um, out of our Archangel right now. And plus the damage that we got in for last turn. So this is going to drop our opponent to eight. Yeah, he's scooped. All right. Well, things went really weird and and badly in game two and game one and three things went really well so let's hope we do more of what we did in game one and three in the rest of our matches uh thanks for watching